What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create a metal barrel inside of Blender. So last week we talked about how to create a wood barrel, this week we're going to talk a little bit more about creating a metal barrel inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I'm going to start off by deleting out my default model. Alright, so once I delete out my default model I'm going to type Shift A to add a mesh. And in this case, we're going to go in and we're going to find a cylinder because the cylinder is what's going to most closely match um, the shape that we're trying to create. So in this case, we're trying to create a barrel shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this from the front view and I'm just going to move it up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to tap the tab key to go into edit mode. And within edit mode, I'm going to type the three key to go to face select mode. And then I'm going to select this face. I'm going to type the G key, then I'm going to tap the Z key in order to move this up. So I'm basically moving this upward inside of my model with this face, and your vertices are all going to stretch, or all of your edges are going to stretch with this face. And so now what we need to do is we need to come in here and add some detail to our barrel. So in order to do that, we need to add a couple edge loops. So to start off, I'm just going to do a control R, then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up so that I get two edge loops right here. And you could move your mouse or you could single click and then move your mouse around. In this case, I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to leave those edges where they are. And so what we need to do is we need to give this a little bit of thickness. These are basically going to be outwardly raised curves on the face of this object. So the way that we want to do this is we want to add another edge loop by doing a control R then we're going to click move our mouse down and we're going to click again. And so we're going to add an edge loop right there. Then we're going to do the same thing down here. So what we've done is we've added two edge loops. So now this has some thickness. And so what we need to do is we need to extrude these out a little bit because these need to be kind of the, these need to be kind of raised up along this surface. So what we need to do is we need to select these and extrude them out. And so the way that we want to do that is we're going to go back into face select mode and I'm just going to hold alt and click on one of these edges. That's going to select this whole edge loop. So you can see how all the way around this, this loop is now selected. And then I'm going to do an Alt Shift and select this one as well. And so what we want to do is we want to extrude these outward. So the way that we want to extrude these outward is we're going to type the E key in order to extrude this. And you're going to notice that right now what this does is this only extrudes these along a direction, right? So if I was to tap the X key, it would move it this way. If I tap the Y key, it would move it this way. It's not really doing what we want it to do. So what we want to do is we want to tap the S key in order to put this in scale mode. So now this is going to scale this outward. And so you can see how right now though this is scaling this outward, but it's also scaling it up. And so what we want to do is we want to type tap the shift Z key and basically what that means is now this will extrude this outward um, without extruding it along the Y or along the Z axis so it's not moving up and down it's just kind of moving in and out so you can use this to quickly add the thickness of these little ridges so I'm just gonna move my mouse until we're about right here, then I'm going to click. And so what that's done is that's extruded this outward. And so now what we need to do is we need to round these edges off. And so the way that we're going to round these edges off is we're going to use the bevel tool to bevel these edges. And one thing to know is you don't want to activate the bevel tool with these faces selected. And so you may be tempted to just come in here, um, hold the Z key and click on wireframe, and then select all of this. So we don't want to do that. And the reason we don't want to do that is because if we were to select all of this and then use the bevel tool, so if I go back to solid mode and do a control B, what that's going to do is that's going to bevel all of these edges off, but it's also going to bevel the faces. And so you get this kind of like weird overlapping result, which isn't what we want. Instead, what we want to do is we're going to tap the escape key and then we're going to go into edge select mode. So you can type two to go into edge select mode. And we just want to do an alt click here then we're going to do an alt shift click here then we'll do the same thing down here so now you have all four of these selected so you just have the edges selected well now if you type control b and move your mouse you can see how you can use this to bevel off these edges and one thing you're going to want to do when you do this is you're going to want to scroll your mouse wheel up in order to add some extra edges in here so notice as I scroll this up this bevel gets more um, this more detailed so I get more edges in here in order to give me a 
or a better bevel detail. So you can see how by hitting control B and then scrolling my mouse wheel up, I can add more detail in here. For if, or if I was to scroll it down, then it would be less detailed. So you can go ahead and scroll your mouse up a few times and then click, and that's gonna give you your kind of beveled edge here. So you can see how this uh, looks a lot more rounded now that we've beveled off the edges. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna do the same thing around the top and the bottom. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna do a control R to add an edge loop. We're gonna click in here, and then we'll just do the same thing that we did before, where we select the face, by typing three and then doing an alt click here and we'll just do an E S shift Z in order to extrude it out. Then we'll hit a two, select our edge loops by doing an alt click or an alt shift click. And then we'll do a control B to bevel. And so we added the detail here. We'll do the same thing down here. And so now we have our rough barrel shape. And so now what we need to do is we need to make our ends look a little bit more realistic. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna type three to go into face select mode. And so what we wanna do here is we wanna start by insetting this face. We're gonna select this face, type the I key, and we're gonna inset it a little bit. So whatever you want the thickness of your barrel to be, you're gonna inset it that much, then you're gonna extrude it down using the E key. And then once you do that, you can also scale this in a little bit if you want to, to give it just a little bit of a slope along the top, just to add that extra little factor in here. You can do the same thing on the bottom. So I to inset, E to extrude, S to scale, and you can click right there. And so now what we need to do is we need to add the cap on the top of our barrel. So the way that we're gonna do that is we need to have a circle on this top face. So we can use the inset tool in order to get our circle. So we can inset this in by typing the I key. So we'll just inset this in. And then you can use the move tool in order to move this around. So notice how these vertices all move around. And when you click, now you've got your cap in here. And notice because we inset the circle this way, these are actually all still quads in here around the outside of this circle. So these are all four-sided shapes. But now what we wanna do is we just wanna add some detail to our cap. So we wanna extrude this up using the E key. What you can do is you can extrude this up maybe about this far. And then you can type Control R and add a couple edge loops in here. So you can do a control R, maybe scroll your mouse wheel up and then add this edge edge loop in here just like this. And then we'll just extrude this out the way that we did the other faces. So we'll do an alt click, E, S, shift Z. So we'll extrude this out. And then we'll go up to this face, inset it a little bit and we'll extrude that down. So maybe something like this. And so what we have here is we have our basic shape for our barrel. So you can see how we were able to use the same modeling principles that we use for anything else in order to create this. And for now, I'm just going to add a simple color to this. So we may talk a little bit more about applying a texture or maybe some rust or something in a future video if you're interested. But for now, we'll just go, we'll just click over here in our material properties, we'll add a new material, and let's say we wanted to create kind of a red color. So, so you can select a red material, you can type A in order to select everything inside of your model, and then you can click on Assign. So now if I click off of this and I go into viewport shading mode, you can see how this is now a barrel material in here. Um, and one thing we may wanna think about doing is we may wanna think about going into wireframe mode and selecting everything associated with this top cap. And we may have to deselect a couple objects here. So let's do a shift click in order to deselect these. But then if I go back to material preview mode, I can just add another material by clicking here, clicking on new 
and we'll go ahead and make this a white material. We'll go ahead and assign that to our cap. So now we've got our metal right here, and then we've got our plastic cap on the top of our barrel as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you modeled stuff like this in Blender before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.